Ain't nobody got me feeling like I'm feeling you. Like I'm feeling you. Like I'm feeling you. I'm Carrie. I'm Lara. And you're listening to Sexy. Sexy. Unique. Unique. Gang bangs. <laughs> Gang bangs. <laughs> Hygiene coach. Um, what coach? Hygiene coach. <laughs> hygiene test. Hygiene guru. We have to call them all guru, like hygiene gurus, so though. A hygiene this mentor. This is my data guru. This is my hygiene guru. This is my managing guru. My ethical slut guru. Mm hmm. Um, the, this episode was a lot, it was radical. It was, it was a radical, radical but... departure from the form that we're used to. People are getting lot. experimental in this space. I'm still not sure if it's good, though. This season is categorically not good. Like, this is, a, this is and we knew this going in, like, that this was going to be yeah. a shithole season that's kind of boring mid, and people are not going to be able to like rise to the occasion because truly the Vanderpump way is that you give them any form of success that they seek. They will immediately fuck it up and like mm -hmm. not give you what you seek. So we need them to be completely failing in order to deliver incredible TV. But if they are winning in any way, shape or form, you can trust Truly, this is my data algorithm. You can trust that if they are winning, it goes down, down, down in quality. We come up on the Tahoe house the morning after Wolf. And you hear James, they like edited his voice, but it sounds like he's using the Dune voice. And he goes, where are my chocolates? <laughs> where are my chocolates, 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 chocolates? Sandoval. Doll? You better watch out. Sandoval <laughs> is writing in his journal. I took mm. a screenshot because I needed to know what, what he had to say. What was he saying? Let's see. Wednesday, July 15th, 2023, 9.55 a.m. Yesterday was one of the craziest filming experiences I've had to your being on this show. Walked to the airport. Walked in the airport. Sheena called me to where they were sitting. Like nothing had happened. Rob, one of the worst days to have only gotten one hour of sleep before flying. Why'd you get one hour of sleep, you fucking drug addict loser? Why? What's going on here? Adderall. One hour of sleep. I was very emotional all day because of the lack of sleep and feeling overwhelmed. I feel love from everyone. Conversation could have gone better with James, but was definitely productive. What is he even saying? Love. Everyone fucking hates you. Everyone hates you. Schwartz I even hates you. He's truly one of the dumbest people ever born. He's an idiot. Sheena is in bed with, and Lala comes in, and then Graham comes in, and everyone. Sheena literally looks like, oh no, <laughs> that dog is scary. He was like somewhat well behaved, but. I know they cut out some snaps. They are literally like editing out like Graham killing a production assistant. Like he's on his choke leash all the time, which I also was like, he's shockingly well behaved and docile, but I'm like, what's the truth here? No, I, need, I know. I need an unedited like shot of Graham's true colors being exposed because I know he's up to no fucking good. It hippie slash Graham. I'm just going to call him Graham. I refuse to call him hippie. He's sucking Graham. I'm dead naming him. I don't give a shit. Graham always, like, you see every, a chill runs down everyone's spine when that dog enters the picture because everyone is afraid and rightfully so. That dog should not be off leash. If I had that dog, I would, if I was on a trip with it, I would tie him up basically in my room. He wouldn't be allowed out they... of my room. Oh my God. To run free in that home? That's sick. 
after everything they I'm... probably have a um they have like men on by with like dart guns yeah they have tranquilizer like tranquilizer a... guns waiting in every room for when Graham goes rogue they can just trank him I would keep him in my room at least and make a little like comfort zone for him and just be like you have to stay in here for the rest only time we can go out I'm going to give everyone a warning to go in their rooms I will take you outside to go to the bathroom and play then bring you back in and immediately usher you inside <laughs> You know what Graham is like? He's like the kid in the Twilight Zone movie who like can control the world with his mind and thoughts and totally. everyone's like terrified of him. Yeah. Everyone's walking on eggshells around Graham. Sheena is like, I'm really conflicted about this. I was texting Ariana last night. She's basically just like, has no mercy and like if anyone is nice to Sandoval she's like I you will not be my friend and Sheena's like it's hard for me because he's I was thinking about during the pandemic when I was pregnant and broke I lost my podcast and I didn't have any money and he paypal'd me like thousands of dollars to stay afloat I believe nice. that and that's really nice like I do believe that Tom Sandoval is like a caring friend in that way. Like as someone that would go out of his way to like help a friend financially. Well, yeah. He paid for fucking James's engagement. Like that is in itself is unhinged, but yeah, he Could is. He, be me, he will... But like, I love that. And honestly, Justice for shenanigans. I hated hearing that Sheena had to go through that tough time. So Lala is pretty like, look, I'm with you. I don't think this person needs to be crucified daily for this dumb thing he did. Like, I think we need to show a little grace here. So like, clearly con Lala is continuing to be like the sober person of the group. <laughs> Yeah, and it's also, it's kind of fucked up to be like, I'm refusing to film with this person that I've been on a show with for like almost 10 years, but everyone else has to film with them. And then I'm going to like make rules for their the kind of relationships they can forge with this person while i'm refusing to engage entirely because also it's like ariana is getting money from a lot of other sources like this show is the only thing many of these people have like yeah they have podcasts and side hustles and a restaurant but I think this show is probably providing like the bulk of their income. My theory is that, I mean, I know it kind of comes out later, but I think in general, Sheena's biggest, why she keeps crying is because she's <laughs> just like, she's like, I've been usurped by my, this person that I was like, never, like, I think she was, she's just genuinely shocked that Ariana is super famous. I think it's really hard. It's a hard pill for someone like her who's been like clawing her way into fame since like before Vanderpump Rules. She's always, that's like the one thing Sheena's always wanted is to just be in a spotlight. And now that she is even more in the spotlight, it's, it's because of someone else. It's not even her. It's like her proxy to it. Do you know what I mean? Totally. I think that's part of it for sure. But I do think also she did lose no, I, a yeah. friend and is experiencing. It's weird because like Ariana, the most emotional we've ever seen her and the only glimpse we've truly ever had of like what goes on in that little head of hers is when we had the finale last season and she was like screaming and like raw but then you cut to this season and it's like there it's just like she's like an avatar 
there's no honoring of like there's no emotional and like reflection on anything there's not even like deep rage or anger and there's not even kind of like the acknowledgement of wow this is crazy that this happened and I became like a famous millionaire and like like there's no acknowledgement of anything it's just like no one talked to this person and I'm not gonna do my job that that I'm supposed to be doing on this show and everyone's just gonna love me and I'm not gonna like see any nuance or give anyone any sort of reflection on anything I see rage brimming but I think she's really trying to like hold it together for the camera to seem like to because her brand now is like steely queen in the face of heartbreak and like she's like you know what I mean and I think even when she's when we see her like she's doing this cocktail book single af cocktails and like she, I think it's just I think she's really compartmentalizing and I see a lot of anger still I think she's really fucking mad yeah and I think I she's mean, just I... trying to put this face on of like I'm a bad bitch I'm a single bad bitch who just got you know cheated on but instead of succumbing I'm gonna like be a phoenix rising you know what I mean so I think she's just like it's it's like a brand she's selling now yeah I think she's on the brim like I've seen buns that have told the true tale but mm -hmm. yeah I need I'm so, you're gonna have to give me more than you're giving you're giving it like you're giving a bit c plus energy at best I'm gonna need you to notch it up to like at least a minus babe She's doing this photo shoot and Katie there Katie and her are just protesting the Tahoe trip and Katie's like that's cool cuz I just want to smoke weed and eat pussy. So she comes over and brings lunch. Finally she speaks. And Carrie Ariana is showing her the cocktail menu and one it's all like about the story of her relationship, the honeymoon period, the betrayal you know, learning who this monster that she was with for 10 years is. And then she has one cocktail called Coachella. And then one is called Little Sister Vibes. It's just, it's oh, strange. Yeah. It, it must be, it's just very strange that Raquel is not monetizing any of this. I mean, I guess she is via her podcast, but. And in, in, in the moment though, like, she's just like, it's, it's just strange. Like she's. But there was not that opportunity for her. No, I I've, that no, I've, that's what I'm saying. It's like there just was no, like she was just fully. You are the. It's like you were the worst person to ever exist in this country, and you must be exiled into the frozen hills. And think about what you did. It really is social media. It's actually insane. Because there was just no opportunity for Tom or Raquel. And also, I guess, like, I guess, I mean, I actually disagree with that. Because I think there is so much attention, like, on them that there is opportunity. But it has, they have to be willing. Like, Tom's too much of a fucking idiot to really understand what to do. Yeah. But, and Raquel, I, I think, was too traumatized to really do anything but, like, go to the insane asylum and try and heal. So I understand why they weren't able to, like, get it together. Yeah, and I I mean, I'm, I'm like, go off to Ariana. Like, truly go off. Like, she's fucking riding this lightning bolt to the cosmos, pretty much. <laughs> like, she's... <laughs> And I respect that, you know, and I, I think, yeah, there's some, do I, do I want her to like film with Tom for my ghoulish entertainment? Want to see her and him duke it out and like want to see her just ream him out on the show? Yes, of course. But I'm also like, she's got to do what she's got to do. Yeah. And... I guess, 
I guess the Raquel thing is just like I'm just she haunts the show. She haunts the season and she's not there. And it's just it's strange because it's like all they talk about is her. Yeah. Pretty much. I don't know. I mean, also to be fair, Ariana was never the m- most compelling character on the show. Like, if someone's gonna get fucked over, like you, when Do, it's like when Doty and Stassi went at it, they like you could at least understand that they're gonna like come back into the fold and like finish what they started and like keep that high energy up and like engage in that way Mm -hmm. but like or even sheena i would argue but i think ariana was always like just too normal she was kind of like the voice of reason she was the voice of reason she was like the proxy kind of like you were always just like why is this cool girl hanging with all these fucking lunatics Mm -hmm. and then this kind of seismic thing happened and then she suddenly was like too big for all of them yeah and i think they're all shocked and like somewhat jealous of that no and i think they're all reeling from this kind of haze they're all in they're all it's like they all have whiplash it all happened so fast it was so meteoric and now they're all like it, the dust is settling and they're like wait is my time in the sun ending and ariana's is still going she's like moving past us now they're like they're, they're reckoning with it the their biggest reckoning is that they are tethered to the show whether they like it or not because and i kind of wish I kind of wish that Ariana had quit Vanderpump Rules and like went on to do Lay's partnerships and like Dancing with the Stars and do her own thing and like maybe have a sandwich spinoff. But I wish that I kind of wish she had left and that Raquel had stayed and we had to just see the fallout of everyone dealing with the fact that a star was born and got to leave the nest and they all have to like weighed in the mire of their own life choices that would have been a far more compelling season to me personally if i had things my way that's what would have happened i think we just have to like assume she got offered a a paycheck she couldn't deny well it's also like you're not going to be able to supplement you're not necessarily when given that choice of being like you're getting six figure deals all the time and then you have a guaranteed like the show is like the base salary and anything on top of that is a bonus but you don't want to just like have something else come in and just replace the base salary and then be missing out on that guaranteed six figures like So you're going to be like, obviously, I'm the star of this. It's She's basically pulling like a Kevin Costner in Yellowstone. Yellowstone. She's like, I'll do it for like $10, $20 million, but I only want to film for a week. And then everyone's like, what the fuck? Like, it doesn't work like that. But she, whereas Kevin Costner, I think they like fired him or they're like not allowing it. She's being like totally allowed to do whatever she wants. This is a show of full of people who have main character syndrome. Ariana was the only person who didn't have that. She was kind of content just being like, I'm just doing this thing with my boyfriend and it's crazy. And I get to like get, I have some notoriety, you know what I mean? And now she is fully the main character and all the main characters who think they're main characters are supporting players and they're fucking pissed. That's mm-hmm. what I think is happening. Um, all right, Tom's arranged a yoga appointment. He lets the woman in and she pretends to not know the story of Scandaval as he explains what he did and why, what he's seeking from this session today. So she's like, okay, so we're going to do a little, we'll do it differently then. We're not going to do like a full like Bikram type of yoga style. We're going to do more of like a healing session. He's like, all right. 
they all gather in a semicircle to begin their meditation journey. And Brock shows up a little late. He was golfing all morning. Got stuck on the 17th hole, but he made it. And he sits down. And he is so pissed. Sheena is furious. And then even more furious when Shannon, the yoga instructor, says, Turn to the person next to you and sit back to back with them, and you're gonna go on a journey with them. And her face was literally, Truman like was a... mad. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> yeah. Here's Brock. Brock, do you want to come over here? <laughs> Brock? Brock, what did? And he's like, Nah, babe, I'm gonna stay here with La La and Schwartz. No, babe, I'm over here with James Nally. Have fun oh, sorry, though. James and Allie. Have fun. Have fun over there, and then have fun then with Tom. She is like, Brock, Brock, oh. and she's like, please lean up against each other right now. And Sandoval's like, all right, got all you right. right let's here. do it. I wrote, Sheen is a warrior. She's she immediately is. crying, and Sandoval goes, you okay? She goes, all right, it's okay. I'm okay. And then she goes. It's not okay. I need a minute. Uh I still fucking hate you. And ran upstairs. (laughs) (laughs) Why does it look like Schwartz has... Why does it look... some For some reason, Schwartz's hair looks like it's, like, wine-colored in this moment. Like, he has, like... Schwartz is, like, purple. He's, like... He's true... Like, his body is failing him. Yeah. Wait, can I just... I'm gonna go turn my AC off. It's freezing. Okay. Brock, are you there? Brock, where were you? Yeah, he comes Brock's in and like, he's like, he's like bye, but I was at the kitchen hole. island. Is there a lag? Is that the problem? No. Oh, okay. Do, do you hear a lag? No, I was just like, I feel like we're talking over each other a bunch, so I'm trying to figure out like where the lag is. Or if there is a lag. Am I butting um, in front of you a lot? I just feel like it's like we're starting talking at the same time. How about for now we'll go. <laughs> I'll go like this, the, and that means then that's talk. on the video. Then that's oh, on true. the video. So let's like. Sheena is crying in the kitchen. Brock comes in to coach her, and he's like, "You just need to like talk to Sandoval. Like you've got this, Carlina." And then she's like, I just wanted to be with my husband. Thought my husband would sit next to me. And he's like, I'm, I'm with James Nelly doll. And then she's like, all I asked is that you come back on time. And I was like, Ooh-hoo. I loved when Sheena finally faces Sandoval. And he looks... He has these like pouty sympathy eyes on. And he goes, I was thinking today, just like about all the beautiful moments we have had together in our friendship. And she was like, I know. We had some good times. And it's really hard. I'm still so mad at you. I really feel for her. She's like so sad and so like emotional and really is having the struggle of a lifetime. <laughs> and she's stuck in Lake Tahoe, like duking it out with Sandoval on camera. And she's really, she's really struggling. Well, she's like, she's so loyal to Ariana. And she's like, it's, I'm team Ariana until I die, but it's really hard. And she's like trying to have this like big TV moment. She's doing it like heavy lifting that she probably feels like Ariana should be doing, but she's doing it sort of on behalf. But then she's going to be in trouble for doing it because Ariana's going to be like, why are you even talking to him? And might eventually hold it against her. So it's, she's just literally a, a ball of nerves and worry she's I feel ge- bad. she's getting scapegoated Lala, Lala and Schwartz are sitting 
back to back and Shannon, the fucking lady is like just attuned to each other's breathing, try and get like in sync with their breathing. And Lala goes, are you breathing Schwartz? And I wrote, this is what everyone f- asks him during sex. <laughs> <laughs> he truly is just full tilapio vibes, just a dead fish energy. And he goes, yeah, I'm breathing. Should we sync up? I was like, Ugh. he goes, there it is. I feel it. There you Ooh. are. Oh my God. Ugh. There's something about him getting like tender that really icks me. There's something about her. <laughs> Shannon goes, I want you to turn and face your partner. And now I want you to imagine that this is the last time you'll ever see them in your entire life. And I was like, that would be these people's biggest dream for most of them. I know. <laughs> be They're separate. never going to escape the clutches of Vanderpump rules. Katie is truly, I believe, hanging on to Ariana because she wants out too, but she knows that the only way out of Vanderpump Rules is to ride Miss Glad's coattails into Sandwich Land. Katie's Katie's smart. But she also is she's Not giving <laughs> D she's giving like D minus energy this season. I know. She fucking cut her hair, and that's the only thing she's done. She cut her hair and, like, dropped the dogs off, and that's <laughs> it. And brought lunch to to her business partner. But she's also just Ariana's assistant now. She's her hype woman to just... Katie's full position is, like, I'm going to smoke so much weed. I'm going to, like, tranquilize myself, and then I'm going to say just yes to everything that Ariana says. Agree with her. And if I play my cards right for, like, the next year and a half, We'll be in sandwich paradise and I'll be out of here. <laughs> hey, paradise, put up a sandwich shop. That is truly her MO. I love when it cuts back to she and, and Sandoval. I need to see one tear on like, cascading down Sandoval's cheek. I'm like, there's his acting. He's so full of shit. Sheena is like sobbing. Everyone has stopped doing anything that Shannon says and are all just sitting together watching Sandoval and Sheena like have this emotional moment. And then everyone finishes up and Sheena goes inside and she's like, I saw real emotion from him for the first time in forever. And Lala's like, come here, Shishu baby girl. And like, (laughs) <laughs> cuddles her in the bathroom and both of them are truly like all we have is each other the sandwich girls are on their own path and now we must link or else <laughs> she goes come here girlfriend Lala goes come here bitch girlfriend I know girlfriend here, I know girlfriend. It's, it's really hard we're in the trenches <laughs> we are in the trenches of this fucking shite <laughs> James is fully deluge Allie is like a trafficking victim i'm sorry she is <laughs> ali is literally like her waking up in this house and having to be around all these people she's truly like how did i get here ali woke up one day and her life was this she lives in burbank on the fucking tarmac of burbank airport <laughs> she's literally getting sprayed by jet fuel every time she goes outside and then she's forced to go on this vacation with a bunch of like recovering alcoholics who are like in and out of their own addictive spirals she has no one to talk to and then her delusional boyfriend who's acting like fun and flirty on camera like is a monster behind closed doors i'm sure of it and also you have to you have to deal with a fucking rabid Pujo. Yeah, and now <laughs> you're the caretaker of a, a poodle doodle that could truly rip your throat out at any second and will most surely kill your cats the second he gets a chance. And then then you have Schwartz who's in like deep cirrhosis. <laughs> He's like John does. Suffering from like renal failure as we (laughs) speak. (laughs) He literally has like purple circles under his eyes. No, his heart rate is like 
his fucking blood pressure is like 35 over 80 it's like slowing his heart is just like slowly giving every out. day is hard no one every can day even, is hard his oxygen, less. his oxygen levels are like at 65 percent no one can even tell if he's breathing. He's basically like weakened at Bernie's. He has like hypoxia. <laughs> his fingernail, his fingertips are all blue and his lips are blue. What, Lala's what's he breathing? Like, <laughs> locked in a custody battle with truly one of the worst men to ever be born. That she's <laughs> going to have to face the rest of her life sharing a child with literally a human turd of a man and then I love I just love Lala and Sheena girlfriend we're all each other <laughs> it's time for them to team up and go rogue because they like they only have each other back at the shoot for a single AF cocktails sandwich gals are eating their lunch and Ariana's talking, talking about Sheena being conflicted about like Wanting to give Sandoval a chance, but also wanting to be loyal. And then Katie goes, well, she goes, if someone wants to be friends with him, they ain't going to be our friend anymore. Uh, and Ariana goes, I was like... <laughs> Ariana communicates with Katie just with eye, eye language only. And Ariana goes, how was your date with that? person from emo night and then we cut to the date and he's literally like a buffoon she goes like on a date with a true blown idiot who doesn't even know what penne pasta is and katie's like i can't have like another project boyfriend like i literally spent 12 years of my life teaching schwartz how to like be eat like anything other than chicken fingies how to use cutlery like Katie, you've just got to go full blown power les. She I, in if she was playing her cards right, she would seduce Ariana and they would scissor and she would then attach herself to her for the rest of time and they could build their sandwich empire because the only men, I'm sorry, the only men that she is going to attract for now is like little baby men that need a mother to like teach them how to hold their fork and knife like yeah like gen z 25 year old idiots also like in la of all places good fucking luck finding literally <laughs> any man you're screwed sister you better get that tongue out and go down on miss glad's puss because it's a sandwich future for you i did <laughs> i did <laughs> I did appreciate her self-awareness of being like, I can't breastfeed anymore. Like, I'm out of milk. That was a step in the right direction. Katie, I truly am forgiving her D, her D plus to D minus vibe because her hair serves such cunt and she looks so good. But there are certain angles when she turns her head that I go, this could slide so quickly and easily into Goslin territory. I'm stressed. It's it's a at risk haircut. It the truly line between is like, the line between serving Khan and serving Karen is like it's razor serving sharp. Goslin is so <laughs> the line between cut and Goslin, the good the good cunt and Goslin is so gossamer. It's a thread. It's a fucking thread. thread. It's a tripwire. Um the crew goes on gondolas up to the top of Lake Tahoe Mountain <laughs> or whatever it's called. And oh. everyone just looks sweaty. This Nothing is the worse worst than a excursion. No one wants took, to be in this gondola. We took a gondola to, in Palm Springs in like the dead of summer. And it was actually really nice to go up on Mount San Jacinto because it's like cold up there. And the, even in the hot, hot summer, that you're packed to the brim. Yeah. It's, Everyone's sweaty. Takes a while to get up there. Poor and... Allie. She also is like deathly terrified of heights. And they're like, let's add that to the mix. We're going to send her in this gondola. Excuse me. <laughs> 
Schwartz what are looks you so... looking at? Are you looking at my notes? notes. Oh, okay. Schwartz looks like he's so sweaty. He's he's like, I need a drink now. I need a hair of the dog now, or I will go into he's, like DTs. He's having DTs. And then Sandoval starts fucking just when you think he's like man, had some sort of humility or some awareness, he goes, yeah, man, it's really makes sense that uh, Sheena was diagnosed with OCD because she just can't get over this shit. And you just see Brock. I give Brock a lot of credit in the scene because he was about to I think he was holding back murderous rage. Because he's sitting there listening to this motherfucker talk about his wife and basically be like, you know, she needs to apologize to me for what she did on all her podcast. Like, he is does not get it. He truly does not understand. Danibal is the biggest dumbass I've ever seen. He is such a fucking idiot. And he has no self-awareness. And he's sitting on a gondola with, like, literal hulk trying talking to shit. talking shit about his wife and baby mama and this guy is like you don't want to mess with an australian no you don't want to mess with like... brock and i have to say my truth is that i love brock i fucking ride for brock i think that i understand that he's had troubles and i see those but I like I like his vibe. I think he has a good vibe, and I think he rides for Shishu, and that's what he I does. want. I think he scares me in moments, and I I see potential for like a scary man, but I also mm -hmm. see he's very protective of Sheena, and he's he but he also challenges her and seems to be like, you need to face this to get over it. Like he gets that she needs to do some things on her own, but and in this has... moment. He has like a fairly acute emotional like yeah. EQ, which I was like, I haven't seen that from like other men on this show in the same way. He cried watching Shishu and Sandoval. I know when they were doing their powwow. I think he's Watch, just like, like Rock a... literally like fucking assaults like seven women and it comes out tomorrow, like the day yeah. after we He's a really <laughs> deep down. He's a really good guy. Like we said with Sandoval. I know. I he's think so that, amazing. Like, I really am. I really am into Brock. I like just, him. Just with these people, though, you never know. You so never. This... You can't say one positive thing because it truly is like the day that you're like, God, they're killing it. They literally will come out and do something so dastardly that you you'll be then the idiot. But so but Sandoval's like, yeah, so. No wonder your mentally ill wife has OCD, can't get over my shit. And then Brock's like, you literally had your publicist leak stories about Raquel and me hooking up to try and take the heat off of you. Like, I found this out. Like, I called and found out about this. And it was off the record, but I'm it's on the record fucking now, bitch. And Sandoval keeps going, there's absolutely no proof of that. You will literally never find proof of that. And it's like, okay, well, that is the proof because it's not about finding proof. It's about you did it. Your team did it to, like, deflect. And, like, again, when he says, Raquel and I did something that was never out of malice, not once intended to hurt anyone, he I just did. want these people to, like, reach down deep inside because the best argument for – to counter that argument that Sandoval makes is to be like, what about Halloween? How is that not hurtful? You dressed up as Raquel for Halloween in front of your life partner. You dressed up as the person that you were fucking. So like that on its face is hurtful. So like fucking explain that. Like you did hurt people. Evil. And you know, Raquel was laughing along and loved that too. So she was fucking evil in that moment too. I'm sorry. And like I have empathy for her. And he's still wearing the lightning bolt necklace. Yeah. On it's this fucking whole crazy. I, I'm like, I was literally like, ah, 
watching him in this moment, he is such a little fucking bitch, and he's a little he's weasel a going, oh, you have no evidence. You, oh. He's one of those people that would, like, try to pick fights with, like, a huge col- like colossus, and then be like, no, oh, and run away. And and he keeps going. My team did nothing of the, like. He, by the way, hearing both of them say teams, I was like, I'm gonna fucking blow my own head off. But <laughs> but also, you say you love this girl, Raquel, but you're you you were willing to throw her sexuality under the bus again for to cover your own ass and be like, oh, she's a slut. She hooked up with Brock too. Like yeah, fuck what the you. Fuck? I didn't even think about that. But that's, that's your so that's true. the girl that you say you love and like you were willing to throw love of your, your life. Head, love of your life. You just threw her away and basically were like, she's good for nothing except her pussy because she slept with someone else's man. Fuck yeah. you. You don't give a shit about Raquel. You yeah. don't give a shit about her. You only care about yourself. You are a cold blooded snake. He the is amazing the amazing thing too is that if Ariana were to play ball, she's the only person that can like successfully shut him down in moments like this. So it actually would have been extremely powerful to have her around in these moments to just be like, no, and like set the record like totally straight. And I do actually feel like, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't deserve to have her perform the labor to make him understand. But in no. the world of this show, we deserve it. So Miss, we Brad, do. I, we need you. I still am like, I don't think like someone should have like be told to kill themselves unless they're like, you know, I just, but, but I'm like, the more I watch this guy, I'm like, you are truly a bad person. You don't care about Rachel. You're You're a real dummy. No, you can be dumb and a fucking narcissist, which is the worst combo to be. And that's what he is. I'm sorry. I I was so horrified that in the midst of all of this, after everything Rachel was going through, like literally fleeing to Arizona of all places and having to be in a basically, basically like a psych ward, you're continuing. You're so easy to just throw her to the wolves again. Yeah. I'm disgusted by him about anyone but himself. And then they get up to the mountain, and he's like, he goes up to Brock, and he's like, yeah, dude, sorry, man. Just like, it's all so much. If, I wish Brock would just pick him up and chuck him off Mount Josh Tahoe. Grab him by the neck and dangle him over the ledge until he, and threaten to drop him and ta- until he takes full responsibility for his actions and apologizes to everyone one by one. Also, I love him being like, making her OCD about him. It's like, not that she's like, postpartum and having like, crazy like you know crazy isn't intense like paranoia about like leaving her baby which is so understandable not like it's all about him and like what she said on shenanigans about him (laughs) he's such a fucking i want to like just bitch slap him i know i'll take my shirt off like he did in las vegas and be like come on come on man you want to go and you know what? I'll say it ever- again. Sorry to what? interrupt you. I'll say it again. Bad vibes from Tom. You know, I saw him that one time at NASCAR and he was too cool for me. And this was back in 2018. <laughs> and he, no, but I was like, you look where we are, man. We're in Fontana at a NASCAR and you're not taking a photo with the only gay guy other than my, other than Simon that's there wants a photo with you. And he's going, oh no. And fucking, John Diss is like, let's do it, guys. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you knew. Tells a lot. Everyone's gondola outfits are truly buck wild. They are. Allie is the only person dressed with, with an semblance of normalcy. Rock's like, I need a beer to calm down after that. And Schwartz is like, I'll have one, man. Let's do a shot, too. I was like, of course. Love. Sober she king. was drinking like monster energy drinks. I was like, whoa, what? she shoot. <laughs> Miss OCD, the last thing you need is like a fucking hit of caffeine. I know. It's so <laughs> true. It's the last thing you want as someone who has yeah. OCD. You really don't need that. 
I would argue that no one needs monster energy drinks. Like they're no. truly an unnecessary thing. They're disgusting. They're gross. Um, poor Sheena is being Words. now relentlessly trolled by a page six article that came out where someone, and I remember this, where someone saw them out filming and asked if she could get a picture with all of them. So they all just like got together and took a picture with her. And then everyone literally lost their minds and was like, fucking Sheena flip flopper bitch. Like just coming for her for standing next to Tom Sandoval for a picture. Sheena has been, since season one, has been, like, and I'm saying this, I know we always, like, but, like, genuinely, like, she is so scapegoated. Within an inch, people are ready to go. And, like, she's the sacrificial just, lamb of Vanderpump rules. I just love how all these girls, all these, like, straight women, like, watching this show being, like, like we ride for our queen you know feminists like slay like let's you know slay the oppressor tom sandoval but it's like but then are so easy to be like you fucking slut you flip flopper you fucking bitch it's like where's your feminism now honey it's psychotic you're ready to just blame a woman at the, at the drop of a hat because she had her arm around a guy in a group picture where she was being nice to some rando and also Tahoe? like their body language was like standing apart from each other. It wasn't like it wasn't like she was like hanging around his neck, like resting her head on his shoulder or kissing yeah. him on the cheek. Sheena can't take it. Lay the fuck off, Sheena. Lay it off. Lay it off. And then I'm gonna make all this those... short and sweet. You better make it short off, and Sheena. sweet. You better fucking back off, Sheena Shay. Or I'm gonna come with the flare. I also believe that she fa so she FaceTimed Ariana. Did she FaceTime her right after the like meditation? No. Well, first, first she FaceTimed goes... her shortly afterwards, and I think she did it even before the photo because she wanted to get a. She knew that like Ariana's gonna get wind of the fact that they like filmed together and like cried together, so she's just trying to like appease her. No, I. I relate. I feel I see my I like relate to Sheena so much. You and Sheena like, are kind of one in the same. People pleasing and also just like neuroses and like wanting to be like get ahead of things, you know. And like I could see myself. And by the but way, it's such a Sheena... note. Oh, go Schwartz ahead. going. He they go. <laughs> he gets up. He when at one point he, he's like had a beer and he goes out and he goes. This might be the most beautiful lake on the planet. <laughs> anyway, what if I Sheena what? What if you and Sheena, what if Dorothy ax gave birth to twins, but somehow Sheena got taken away and placed in Azusa? I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. But like... Yeah, just so Ariana and Katie meet Chef Penny at Electric Owl, which is down the street from me. <laughs> that place is truly, I never want to go there. They love it there. They love, the Vanderpump Rules crew loves the Electric Owl. Chef Penny's waiting. Chef and... Penny literally looks at them and goes, look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Chef goes, Penny has fully taken over every sort of operation for Sandwich Empire and is now like usurping the throne. He goes, You want to sit down right now and let me take care of everything? They're they're hosting interviews at Electric Owl for like front of house staff. For sandwich hosts and hostess. This bald king comes up first and he's like hey and they're like do you have experience and he's like yeah i worked at the four seasons and i have experience with busing hosting serving and then before ariana and katie can get a word in chef when he goes i have a question for you what's your favorite sandwich meat 
What the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? What's your favorite cured meat? Go. He goes, salami? She goes, good answer. And You're literally what? letting the woman who made the menu at Sir. I know. Take over your sandwich shop. You uh, you guys are also fools for this. You're a fool. Well, they're, they're stuck. It's not that they're... It's They agreed. They probably signed some shit and agreed to it before Scannable happened. Before and Ariana now, could have gotten, like, Chef Curtis Jones or whatever his name is. <laughs> Curtis yeah. Stone. Ariana Bobby could Flay. literally have, like, Bobby Flay's sandwich shop. There's something about Flay. And instead, she's stuck with... This is the best thing that's ever happened to Chef Penny in her entire life. Chef Penny no, but... wakes up every day and sees dollar signs dancing on the ceiling because she knows that she's the head of the sandwich empire. But it's... This is Game of Sandwiches. Game it of is. Thrones. Anytime she speaks, Katie or Ariana kind of widen their eyes. And then goes... they get a FaceTime from Sheena and she's... This is after the crew has taken to a yacht to take on the Lake Tahoe, which, by the way, Tahoe is like the most beautiful lake. It really is. Stunning. I want to go there. Um, have you been there? Mm-mm. Oh, it's so it's the water is freezing, but it feels so good. And Sheena's literally coming undone. The undoing is happening before our eyes. She is so nervous about Ariana finding out and being mad at her. She goes up on the poop deck and she. FaceTimes Ariana at the old owl. And she's like, Yeah, I just want to let you know there was this like and Ariana's just like Ariana's like She's like, it was and actually really like, good. Yeah, it was like, really hard, and I'm just struggling. And it was like really hard, and I'm like just so emotional, and I'm just having a really, really hard time. And Aaron is like, "Well, sucks for you, I guess. We're really busy right now. We have sandwiches to run. We have chips to figure out." And Katie's and then- like, "Yeah." must be hard being there and they hang up and they go that trip sounds like it really sucks and they go yeah it sucks over there for them they laugh and then penny comes in and fucking cracks the whip and is like fall in line girls fall in line i have sandwich questions i have meat questions to ask this is how this is gonna go you're gonna sit here i'm gonna ask about lunch meats any questions that go through me, you're too not your, to talk. What is your preferred cured meat to sleep on? <laughs> Do you sleep in a pillow of prosciutto? Do you sleep in a bed of lies? I'm like, bitch, what does it matter? It's not like you have some fucking master butcher delivering you, like, hand-cured meats. You're literally getting, like, boar's heads best, I'm sure. <laughs> if even that. So, like, stand down, Miss Penny. And then Ariana and Katie talk, and Katie's like, well, it just sucks because you simply will not be friends with anyone who even speaks to Sandoval. And Ariana goes, I'm not giving ultimatums to anyone. What I'm doing is simply saying, if you choose to engage with him, I'm choosing to do what's best and healthiest for me. I was like, you literally are giving an ultimate. That is an ultimatum. I love, I love nothing more than a smug. I know. Like, I love, I crave smugness of having to do what's healthiest for me. I know. It's so, it's so girl energy that I really enjoy. The lording of like, well, I'm just really just trying to make the healthiest choices for me to live my life the healthiest way. Chef Penny goes, did I say you could stop? I'm still interviewing candidates. I need you to uh, get it on your fucking. You better TV. shut up. Figure it out. Shut up. I have meat questions to ask. We're hiring that one girl. We are not hiring Dill Pickle Tie. End of story. Shut the fuck up. Shut the Make fuck up. Make an order of 17 jars of mayo, 13 jars of mustard, 
fuck up. Because we have a budget of thirteen dollars. Get as much meat as you can. Get the cheap meat. She makes him go in and go see for cured meats. <laughs> I need you to meet me back here at four p.m. And if you Wait. don't have a fucking Santa Claus toy bag full of cured meat, I'm gonna fucking shit in both your mouths. Also, Penny, like the cut to her explaining bread to them, where she goes, "This loaf is long, and this loaf is <laughs> wide." And Katie goes, "Ooh." I was like, this, my God, the, they're making this sandwich shop, like, it's like, it's not that hard. I feel like if you gave me a hundred grand, I could open a sandwich shop. Like, I don't feel like it's like as intense or as hard as they're making it seem. You never know with loaves. <laughs> she goes, Katie goes, ooh, I like, I think they'll both end up doing the job. Keen I mean observation. We cut to the boat and Schwartz dives off with a life jacket on and he starts swimming. And I'm like, <laughs> I was just imagining him drowning. <laughs> I love I love Brock and his little budgie, budgie smuggler. I know. And then Lala and Sandoval start talking. And at first it starts off like friendly and Lala being like you know, I, I really want to, like, move past this point we're at where I can, like, be in the same room as you. And, like, I feel like I, I want to just, like, move on and not have to, like, punish you all the time for what you did. You made a mistake. It's it, whatever. Like, we have to move on from it. And Santa was like, yeah, it's just like, you know, I feel like you guys have really been doing a number on me and, Ra me and Raquel from, like, all your podcasts. And then Lala's like, well, and I was like, oh, shit. And Lala goes, well, you know, I seem to remember you calling me not real. On, on gave some an interview, in gave an interview, an interview the that came out the same day as Scandaval, where he criticized Lala for being like not real and only sharing a portion of her life. She goes, so to hear that from you, the same day you got caught for having an affair is pretty fucking rich. And then and then James goes, that's true. That's true. I saw that. I remember that interview. That was happening. <laughs> and, and Sandoval's like, well, you you know, Lala, there was a big part of your life you didn't share with us. Like how you had a six-year-long affair. And Lala goes, that's not true. I didn't have a six-year-long affair. It was five. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> kidding. But, but, but they start going really at it. Lala gets activated and then starts like screaming to at Tom. Yeah, I was like, finally, someone's screaming at him. I love it. And basically, I see what she's saying. And his argument also has some legs to it, but they're both wrong. They're both wrong. I mean, like, he's more wrong in this moment because it is really rich to be like, saying all that and he's like you i don't know it's just it's fucked up it's just not the same for everyone and also like he had an affair with someone on the show it's like randall wasn't on the show yeah it's it's different it's different i'm sorry it's and, different and I, I liked when Lala was like, you know, you were bone chilling to me. You're, I think you're a scary person. And I knew I felt full dread from you when Raquel said, if I don't stay in line with Sandoval, then I'm not going to have anyone. She goes, you groom, you kept her away. You isolate. Like she really, and Tom's like, I didn't groom her. What are you talking about? Don't you dare call me a groomer, Lala. He keeps going to la 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 don't la, call me a groomer la, la, la. no don't you la, dare la. i'm not a groomer he yes, is you, kind of a groomer she, she i like that she said that she goes you you fucking left you her isolate like, you, and you isolate groom. you groom you're a scary you're a bad person he goes la la no don't call me a groomer la la, la. no and then Lala's like, am I going crazy? Like, no one else will even yell at him in this moment, which I was like, come on, guys. Like, let's go. But everyone yeah. else is, like, standing out there. And then Sheena goes in to have, like, peace brokering talks. 
She's like, what she's trying to say is like, I'm here, and she's done a man, and you're an immediate, and nobody you know, it was a good, it's a bad, bad idea, and it was green in the middle. She's like, United Nations. Like, she's oh, a translator. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. All right. Okay. No, but, no, but it's not an oh, okay. It's not, he doesn't understand it. He still doesn't get it. He's not no. going to ever understand it. We need to move away from that. This is a man that will not take accountability for his actions ever. Just, just, oh, shoot. Set him up. <laughs> what she's trying to say is. Yeah. And then they like end up hugging it out, which I was like, Ugh. don't hug this groomer. <laughs> and then back of the house, Lala and Sheena are talking. And Lala's like, I'm so darked out. This whole situation is insane. And Sheena goes, look, the truth of the matter is, Ariana knew how badly I wanted to be on Dancing with the Stars. And she got it. There's no acknowledgement of, maybe this is something you've always wanted, but why does it, I can never have my moment. I'm so happy for her. I really am. But what about me? And I was like, Sheena isn't having a what about me crisis. She is. I mean, it's look, I get it. It's real. This is very real and honest. Yeah, I get it too. And this is, also, this is literally are made. what it is to live in LA. Sheena's getting raked over the coals for the just taking this picture. And Lala's like, did has Ariana like come to your defense or like said anything to defend you? And she goes, No, of course not. And like, I was like, That's very, very telling. And Lala said, Lala says, Ariana really needs to get her head out of her ass and like come back down to earth and be like, put a stop to like this kind of campaign against Sheena could be immediately squashed if Ariana was like, Guys, come on. But she's not doing it because it's helping her brand, which I get. But I'm also like, this is your ride or die since college. And it's complicated. And it's like, I get that it's uncomfortable to have friends who are friends with people that you don't like. Like, sometimes that sucks. But it also is like, people can have their own separate relationships with someone truly at the end of the day have nothing to do with you i mean brock said it in the gondola he was like my wife got a restraining order put on her you know like she's she, this has been a lot for her and santa was like yeah for punching raquel in the face but i'm saying to our Ar- and ariana like this girl went hard for you i i don't know Sheena I would... threw down. Sheena got She's... physical on your behalf and has been like your ride or die and supportive. And all you need to do is be like, thank you. And then give her like a million dollars. <laughs> you just have to be like, it's okay, Shishu. Like, I see you and it's cool. It is very it's... LA. But like, these people's dreams are, and goals and ambitions are st- could not be further from my own but it is we're all fighting these same battles but yeah it's just i think they all just i think sheena they all not need a sun ray from the mother source which is ariana right now and they just need her to shine on them just for a second they crave well, also this. just like get in the fucking mix you're not Anyone that thinks that's on Vanderpump Rules who thinks they are simply too good to be on Vanderpump Rules has brain worms. You've missed the plot entirely. This You're never going to come off on this show looking good, ever. So for you to even think for one second that that's a possibility, think a fucking again. And you better get yourself to Tahoe, jump off the dock, swim a mile over to that goddamn boat, and start fighting. Or else... There, there, my sister. favorite too. Here, something here. I clocked. What? I just said there, there. Here, here, sister. Fucking Brock is 
shit faced and comes back to the house and Schwartz is also shit faced, but that's nothing new for old Tom Schwartz. And they like go out to watch the beautiful Tahoe sunset and Schwartz says something like they start talking about relationships and Schwartz is like, yeah, everyone thinks like Katie and I had this like storybook romance. It was like all amazing. And I was like, literally no one thinks that. Not one person, if you ever asked them, would ever think that. So no, what you're... world have you been living in? Your relationship was a thing of nightmares. Your relationship was a hell from which we will never awake. Like, story. what the fuck are you talking about? He was, it was not easy at first. He's like, I didn't even like her. Like, basically, is like, he's like, was not easy i was in a hard place and like there have been a lot of times i don't even like her a lot i was like we know you literally poured a beer on her head you disgusting fish of a man i love katie's mom watching that being like that's great that's good tommy tommy Tommy. loves katie Katie loves loves tommy There's still love there. No, there's Ooh, I still have chills, bad chills about Katie's mom. Terry. I love I still have I still am like gagged for the for the rest of my life at Rachel going, what Terry? <laughs> Incredible. Someone called someone a cunt in that exchange that I don't remember who it was. Well, Katie went. No empathy. No <laughs> compassion. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> no empathy, no compassion. It's getting, we need it's Rachel getting back. weird. It's we really weird. need Rachel back. I good. wish that she would be so rogue. I wish the next rogue I need Rachel to go. Like, what would truly be the most rogue is if she then showed up on this season of the show, like midway through, and she buried the lead entirely and led her entire audience on her podcast to believe that she wasn't coming back. But then lo and behold, she goes so rogue that she ends up coming back on the show. What would be so rogue if Katie, Chef Penny, and and Ariana were still doing interviews and then they look down for a second and they look up and Rachel takes her seat. <gasps> she goes, Hi. Hey. I'm here for the hostess job. I have a lot of experience. And then <laughs> smashed cut to black. That would be incredible. Hello. I'm here for the I'm still holding out event. hope. Uh, well, you know what? We said that we were... We had hope for Samantha and we got a little glimpse of her. I know. So. I think that it's never over until it's truly over. Like a sh- like a, as in a show is completely yeah. done. I really do think that we could see a long rogue leg strut a pair of pins strutting into any given scene and Miss Rogue will be back in town. Do you understand? She would re-enter and be the queen of the show. She would. She would. She doms Tom. She doms James. She could get Allie to join forces with her. I think she and Sheena could find a way back to some semblance of friendship. There's a there's a world where Ariana and Rachel forgive each other. Honestly. Or Ariana forgives Rachel. That would be the most rogue that Ariana could go is to show Rachel a shred of grace. And hire awesome. her to work at their sandwich shop as a hostess. Team, team, girlfriends unite. I'm a girl's girl now, I swear. And they go, okay. Katie okay. would be steam. Make some would go, Steam would come out of her ears. <laughs> and would go, get in front, count the, lo- count the loaves of bread. I'm going to need a loaf count every day. Some are wider than others. Take note of that. Some look the same, but some are wide and some are long. She goes, you are now the queen of ciabatta. (laughs) You're the countess of ciabatta. Jeff Benny won't call anyone by their name. She just calls them different bread, different breads. She goes, cornbread, get over here. Potato Potato bread, get over here. White loaf. Ciabatta, 
Chibata. Roll call. Pretzel she was roll. Pop quiz roll call. Chibata, are you here? And Raquel goes, present. Yes! <laughs> I'm here. Should we do a roll call of our cult ladies? We do. We need to do a roll call. And days and gays and. One moment, please. Chibata, are you with me? Hello. Hello. Is anyone there? I'm going to make this short and sweet. Make it short and sweet, please. I'm going to make this short and sweet and shout out our Patreon members who are cult members. Make up fresh. Make up fresh. Denise Jeanette Bruce. Denise Richards. Rachel in Dublin. Rachel in Galway. Gina Sapienza. Sapienza. CP76. CP3PO. Sarah Elizabeth. Sarah Palin. Lucy from London. Lucy Lou. Joe Anson. Joanna. Rachel Knight. Rachel Levis. Brittany Ryan Weiss. Brittany Ryan Chibata. Danielle McMillan. Danielle. Potato Lady Swamp, which gives no fucks. Lady Swamp, which gives, gives no loaves. Lazara. Lazara loaf. Malzatov. Malzatov cocktail. Mary. Mary. Mike Earhart. Mike Amelia Earhart. Sharon Baum, realtor. Sharon Stone, realtor. Timothy Scheel. Timothy Chalamet. Sonia Morgan on mushrooms. Sonia from Mortal Kombat. Matthew Thomas. Matthew Broderick. Owsley Robinson. The Electric Owsley. <laughs> Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. Kathy West. Rochelle Martino. Rochelle Martino. Kathy Weiss. Kit Moore. <laughs> Hillary. Okay. Hillary Rodham Clinton. Orlando. Orlando Bloom. Patron of the Farts. Patron of the Arts. Nick Sedaris. Nick Bial. Emily. Emily. Kim Lucas. <laughs> Jeffrey Kim Pradima, 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 Pradima. <laughs> Jeffrey Pradima. <laughs> I like this association. Kim guys, Kardashian. thank you so much for, guys, thank you for continued cultage. We love you so fucking much. Couldn't do we it love without you. you. And we love all our Patreon people. If you want bonus episodes, if you want early episodes of my podcast career in the form of Pumped Podcast, which I did from 2014 to 2016, if you want uncut, raw, ad free episodes, and early video episodes and bonus video episodes. Get come on down. Come on Sign down up. to something about Patreon. Sign up at patreon.com slash sexy unique podcast. And our bonus episode this week is gonna be released tomorrow. So keep an eye out for that. And then we'll be back IRL and on our regularly scheduled programming next week. Bye. 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 Look at this.